Hi, I am Katie from the Blog Hearts Content Farmhouse, and today what we're going to be making is jalapeno cheddar sourdough bread. Make sure when you're doing this recipe, you start with a really mature starter. We're not adding any yeast, so we're relying just on your sourdough starter to make this bread rise. So it's really important that it's well fed and that it's at least a month old. So in the description box below, I'm going to put the recipe written out in grams, ounces, and cups. Um, but if you want to use one of those other measurements, just look down there and check it out. So this recipe is going to start out just like any other sourdough bread. We're going to do an autolyzed phase, which means we are going to measure out our bread flour, sourdough starter, water, and sugar, combine them in a mixing bowl, and let that rest for about 30 minutes. Um, before the rest period, you want to make sure all these ingredients are well incorporated. So if you have to use your hands to sort of get everything into one big ball, that's what you have to do. It's going to look really rough at first. It's not going to look like a super wet, hydrated dough. That is fine. So we're going to start with three cups of bread flour. I like to use the King Arthur brand, but any bread flour is fine. Make sure you don't use all-purpose flour for this. You really want a bread flour. So three cups of bread flour, one and a third cups of just lukewarm water, three quarters of a cup of your sourdough starter, and then three quarters of a tablespoon of sugar. So we just mix that in any old bowl, cover it with a clean tea towel, and let it rest at room temperature for 30 minutes. That's the auto ice phase. While that's resting, you can go ahead and chop up your jalapenos and your cheddar cheese. Um, what I used for this was a was just Cracker Barrel brand cheese. Um, the brand isn't important, but definitely get a block of cheese and chop it into cubes. If you use shredded cheese, which I tried at first, it just sort of disappears into the dough when it bakes, uh, and you're not going to have those noticeable pockets of cheese. So you really want to do a diced block. Um, so sharp cheddar and then jalapenos. You can use fresh or you can use pickled. Um, I went ahead and used pickled here because it was what I had on hand. And what we are doing is a third of a cup of jalapenos, which if you're doing fresh, equals out to about two whole jalapenos diced up. The amount, it's also personal preference. So if you go a little bit over, a little bit under, not that big a deal. So after the autolyzed phase is over, you remove the towel. And at that point, you add in the salt, the cheese, and the jalapenos. And you want to knead this by hand for about two minutes would be good. Um, what we're doing really is just making sure that all these ingredients are really incorporated into the dough. So once that's done, you should have a ball of dough with all the ingredients in it and everything evenly incorporated. And now it needs to do its first rise. This is a true sourdough, so this takes a while. It's gonna take probably about three to four hours. And I like to do this at a really warm room temperature, somewhere between 80 and 90 degrees. So what I will do is turn my oven on just for a minute or so, get it warmed up, then turn the oven off, and then use that as the area that I proof the dough in. So we're going to put this in a clean, oiled bowl, cover it with plastic wrap or a damp towel, and it's going to rise for three to four hours. But we can't just put it in there for four hours and walk away. That would be too easy. <laughs> Every hour, we have to do what's called the stretch and fold. And what that does is build up the strength of this bread dough. What it wants to do, since it's a higher hydration dough, it just wants to sort of relax and thump out into a big lump. But we don't want that. We want a loaf that's gonna hold its shape. So every hour, we take it out of the oven and right in the bowl, we sort of reshape it into a ball again. Flip it over, it'll look like a ball when you put it in the oven. Then when you take it out an hour later, it will again have just thump turn back into a big old lump. So you reshape it again, and you do this three to four times. Each time you're gonna notice that the dough is rising higher and higher, it holds its shape a little bit more, and once you have done the third or fourth stretch and fold of your dough, it is time to move over to the second proof. So when it comes time for the second proof, you wanna get a um, proofing basket, and you want to either really, really flour it really well or have a cloth liner in there. I prefer the kind with a liner. And you, either way, you're going to have to flour it well. What I like to use is rice flour. Um, I really resisted buying rice flour, but it makes a huge difference in how much the loaf sticks to, to the cloth once you turn it out. It's amazing. If you do rice flour, you're not going to have any problems with sticking. So I generously flour with rice flour, shape the dough into a ball one final time, and then plop it into this proofing basket, cover it with plastic wrap this time, since this is a really long proof, and then it goes in the fridge overnight. So in the morning, it is time to bake. 
We're going to bake this at 450 degrees. I do not worry about having it come to room temperature before I bake it. I just preheat the oven, take it out, um, and it's good to go. So um, you, oh, we're going to bake this in a Dutch oven. That is going to help it rise because the Dutch oven is going to trap that steam in there. If you don't have a Dutch oven, you can instead put a rimmed baking sheet in your oven, let that baking sheet preheat in the oven, and then pour a cup of water in as you bake the loaf. That's going to create steam too. If you have a Dutch oven, it's just easier that way. So put your loaf on a piece of parchment paper, drop that parchment into the Dutch oven, cover it up with the lid, and we are going to bake 25 minutes with the lid on. Remove the lid, let it bake another 25 minutes. And then this is something I just like to do. I take the loaf all the way out and bake it directly on the rack for five minutes. And that is gonna help brown the crust all over and crisp it up a little bit. I find that the sides of it don't really brown that well when it's in the Dutch oven just cause it's shielded from the heat so much. So I feel like that final five minute bake by itself in there really helps it brown and crisps it up just a little. Um, and that is it. One thing with sourdough bread is you want to let it cool about three to four hours. Let it be totally cool before you cut into it or else when you cut it, you're going to kind of smush down all those air holes. And it also, before it's fully cool, it seems kind of gummy, which is not appetizing. So make sure it's fully cooled before you slice it up. And that is it. This is a really delicious recipe. Um, it's not much harder to make than just your average loaf of sourdough bread. Um, and it goes really well with um, a dinner or for making a sandwich, and I really think you will enjoy it. Um, I'm going to link in the description box below all the tools that I use when I bake sourdough bread, as well as a link to my blog post, which has a version of this recipe that you can print out if you want to print it and save it for later. So I hope you like it, and thank you for watching, and have a really good day. Bye.